started with vector control in the last session. Um, we discussed the direct vector control and the two different types of direct vector control strategies that we employ. Uh, the voltage control model and the current control model. So direct vector control, what happens in case of a direct vector control is that we generate uh, the unit vectors cos theta e and sin theta e, they are referred to as the unit vectors. They are generated using uh, the values of voltage and current, fine. So you can either generate them from voltage or from current by actually deriving the values of flux. So from the voltage and current values, we derive the values of flux and from the flux vectors, we are able to derive uh, the angle theta e. And accordingly, we can actually derive cos theta e and sin theta e. So we saw how we can do uh, using both voltage control model as well as using current control model, how we can derive the angle theta e. So uh, So it's basically a flux estimation technique, derivative vector control. We are actually estimating the values of flux, and from flux, we are actually getting the values of theta e. Fine. Uh, we have another vector control strategy that is the indirect vector control. And most often, uh, indirect vector control is most widely used as compared to the direct vector control strategy. It's preferred over the direct vector control strategy. Now what happens in case of indirect vector control is that we obtain theta e uh, by the integration of omega e d t. Fine. So if we have the values of omega e dt, we can by integration uh, by integrating speed, um, the angular speed over a period of time, we can obtain the angular position uh, that is theta e. So in other words, what we actually do is uh, we measure the value of omega r and we calculate the values of omega slip fine the addition of these two actually gives us the synchronous speed of the induction motor so theta is actually calculated using this formula what happens in case of an indirect vector control is we have the major value of rotor speed we add the slip speed to it and integrate it we will get the values of theta e so uh, the block diagram will look something like this. So this is the indirect vector control strategy so you can see in this case we have the motor using sensors we are measuring the speed omega r fine we integrate omega r we'll get we'll be getting the value theta r but we actually need theta e if we are dealing with synchronously rotating reference frame, we need theta e and not theta r. But if we are dealing with a rotor reference frame, we need, uh, in that case, we will only need theta r. So we can directly feed this uh, to generate cos theta e and sin theta e. So this is our omega r. Uh, from here, we are getting omega s l. The summation of two will give us omega e. By integrating this, we will be getting theta e. So this unit vector generated is simply uh, to produce cos theta e and sin theta e. So this value of theta e can be fed to uh, for 
two phase to three phase conversion and from back from three phase to two phase uh, from abc to dq conversion and for dq to abc conversion uh, we can use this cos theta e and sin theta e uh, so the block diagram internally will remain same uh, from here we are controlling the speed of induction motor and from here we are actually controlling the flux of induction motor so both the control loops will be uh, separate we are getting actually the values of ids and iqs by controlling flux and speed uh, independently so converting them uh, using this two phase to three phase converter back from dq to abc will be getting the values of abc uh, so let me redraw this so we have actually the induction motor here So the induction motor is fed from a three phase inverter. So there are three switches, there are six switches, so we'll be having six pulses generated using the hysteresis current controller. Using a taco generator, we'll be able to obtain omega r. This omega r is uh, omega sl is added to omega r so that we obtain omega e, the synchronous speed of induction motor using an integral. Using an integrator, we can obtain theta e. This theta e will be required and this dq to abc conversion block uh, to in order to calculate cos theta e sin theta e cos theta e plus 120 sin theta e plus 120 uh, that the matrix that we have derived for dq to abc conversion that matrix will be embedded within this block so we'll be getting the values of ia ib ic uh, the history is current controller will compare the reference values of ia ib ic with the measured values of IA, IB, and IC. So uh, those measured values will actually come from the uh, so you are actually getting IABC using current sensors. Uh, employed at the starter connected with the starter windings of the induction motor so what is going in here is id star that's the reference value of id and iq star this id star is actually obtained from a pi controller by comparing the values of psi 
R, the rotor reference, the flux, uh, the main flux of the induction motor and the measured value of flux, fine. While as this IQ star is obtained from another PI controller by comparing the values of omega the rotor speed the reference value of rotor speed and the measured value of rotor speed as far as this omega sl is concerned it is actually obtained from iq so this is the log diagram of an indirect vector control in a direct vector control strategy theta e was generated from either voltage or current but in case of indirect vector control strategy this theta is simply obtained by the integration of omega e why uh, in the direct vector control strategy using voltage and current we can estimate the value of flux from the values of flux we can obtain theta e since the theta is generated from voltage and current that's why it's known as direct vector control strategy while as in this case theta is generated from speed values uh, speed is not speed is a response it's an action of this induction motor once voltage or current is flowing in the system so that's why this strategy is known as indirect vector control strategy Now, as far as this omega sl the slip speed is concerned it's obtained from iq by multiplying it with uh, this uh, value again this uh, quantity can be derived from the dynamic model of induction motor that we have already previously seen uh, So what are the advantages of using indirect vector control strategy? Generation of theta is fairly simpler. You simply use a taco generator to measure speed, add it with the slip speed to and integrate the synchronous speed to obtain theta e it's simple while as in case of direct vector control strategy you have to first estimate the values of uh, flux you cannot uh, most often using flux sensors is not advisable because flux sensor flux sensors do not give uh, an accurate value of flux so we actually estimate the values of flux using voltage or current model from the values of flux we are obtaining the theta e so flux estimation as far as flux estimation goes it's not required here these are the advantages over direct vector control generation of theta is simpler flux estimation is not required So since flux estimation is not required, uh, the range of operation range of operation for different speed values. As I said to you, as I was saying to you in the voltage control model, uh, the range of estimation is 
in case of a voltage control model or a current control model flux estimate will not be accurate for all values of speed sometimes the flux estimate will be slightly deviated from the actual flux value and so our speed will actually be different from what we are estimating uh, our theta e will be different from what we are estimating sorry uh, but in this case for different speed values uh, we are actually obtaining theta e from different speed values so for entire speed range uh, whether it's running at whether it's running at lower speeds or higher speeds or negative speeds the generation of theta is fairly simple and it will be extended over the entire range and it will be robust throughout that range it's not something like uh, voltage control model mein ye disadvantage hai ki wo low speed pe kaam nahi karta current control model mein ye ek disadvantage hai ki higher speeds pe kaam nahi karta so that is not an issue with an indirect vector control strategy throughout every speed range theta e generation will be fairly simple uh, rest of the advantages of vector control strategy are both uh, valid for indirect vector control strategy as well as for the direct vector control strategy mm, there may be there is one disadvantage however with this scheme of indirect vector control strategy we are here using an hysteresis current controller so the disadvantage is the hysteresis current controller produces variable switching frequency it produces switching and it will produce switching frequency as well so current torque will be slightly rippled in nature uh, in this case but we can uh, use other modulation strategies we can use space vector modulation uh, pulse width modulation uh, within the indirect vector control strategy to avoid uh, the use of hysteresis vector hysteresis current controller for generation of pulses uh so this is the basic operation of an indirect vector control strategy um so that's all for this indirect vector control what we'll be doing is in the next session uh, we'll be seeing we'll be seeing how we can employ sensorless vector control or how we can go for direct tower control uh, strategies okay. so that's all for today